Okay. Let me know. Make make sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Signs and wonders Welcome to Super Tuesday. You're tuned in to this virtual space where we praise God, where we pray to God, and we hear good preaching. Once again, we're glad to welcome you into this virtual space, and we trust and pray that God is still on the throne of your heart, that no matter your day, no matter your night, uh, by day or by night, we have someone who promised, Lo, I am with you always. And I want to give God thanks and magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to every generation. Well, I didn't come by myself. There is a rose amidst the thorns. Good evening, Pastor Hill. Good to see you um, with your Super Tuesday background. And you're green, you're looking fly. Well, let me dignify myself. You're looking like a lady in Zion tonight, matching and, and got put it together really nice. Good to see you. It's good to see you, Dr. Menders. And it's good to see all of our Super Tuesday family. And I thank you so much for that. Um, our, our background is a wonderful um, backdrop <laughs> that will help make everyone um, look good. And so uh, thank you so much. And we want to welcome everybody to another experience I pray that if your day has not been super, and I'm not just saying some words, everybody, it's about to be super with a super God and a super word. Every week he comes through with a word to be heard for our hearts with all kinds of presenters that come in their own special way, the way that God has equipped them and their personality, um, their perspective on the scripture. And so tonight is no exception. Um, to what God has in store for us. And so I want to encourage you as we welcome Pastor D to the platform. I'm going to get out of his way because he has some encouragement for you to tell you to be a digital disciple. And so you want to say welcome. Go ahead and encourage somebody to tune in. We know that at seven o'clock, the news is on, but this is very good news that we have for you tonight, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in addition to that, they can go ahead and rewind that news. It's nothing like being live um, in the space, in the place where God's word is going to be heard. It may just change somebody's life, including your own. God bless you. Pastor D. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I'm so glad to be here with you. We are back. We are back. It seems like it's been so long since all three of us have been online together. One week is Dr. Manders and myself. Another week is Pastor Hill and Dr. Manders. Another week it's myself and Pastor Hill. And another week is Dr. Manders by himself or one of us by ourselves. It seems like it has been a long time since the three amigos have been able to ride on Super Tuesday again. But we are here with you, bringing us our unique brand of gospel energy here through the virtual waves. That's right. We may not be literally in your living room, but we are tuned in. We are Zoomed in. We are Facebooked in. We are YouTubed in to your space this evening, this afternoon, this morning, because I know it's live right now, but I don't know later on when you may be watching this. And I want you to know that we are so glad and we appreciate the fact that you've decided to make us part of your experience. There is a special thing that we ask each and every person to do anytime they log on, anytime they hear 
this good news on this platform, we ask you to become a digital disciple. We ask you to become a virtual Bible worker. We ask you to knock on someone's digital door and share this link with them and let them know what's going on. Even if they are not live, I would love for you to be live in this space with us tonight. But even if you are not live later on, you have an opportunity to share the link with someone because someone, someone, someone needs to hear the good news that is going to be shared on this platform a little later on. I'm excited once again to see our host us back, our co-host is back with us in the person of Pastor Michelle Hill. And we know, I'm sure it's already been said already, but I want to extend and let her know my gratitude for her being here with us and know that our prayers have been with you and your family, Pastor Hill, during this testing and trying season. And I just believe, I believe, you know, on, if you wouldn't indulge me for a moment, on, <clears throat> on few, a few days ago, uh, there was a basketball play, game that was played on the collegiate level, women's national basketball final on the collegiate level. It was between two teams, South Carolina, as well as the Iowa, I think they are Hawkeyes, the South Carolina Gamecocks and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Coach Dawn Staley, who was the head coach for the South Carolina uh, Gamecocks, the University of South Carolina Gamecocks, she said something very tremendous and very, very profound. She said, before you or see, before God blesses you with an amazing blessing, he always takes you through a trying and testing season. He always takes you through a this, man, I said, go on ahead, Coach Staley, testify for us. And this is immediately after she had won the national championship game. She was testifying on that platform. Now, what made that special is the year before her team was in the final four and they had lost in a very heartbreaking fashion. She had lost half of her team and in the preseason, Pastor Hill, her team was not thought of to be a team that was going to be a national contender at the end of the year. But one win kept stacking on another win and another win and the sting and the pain of what they had experienced on last year was quickly erased by the triumph that they experienced this year. Can I tell you something, Pastor Hill, and to anybody else that has gone through a season of testing and and trying and trial and tribulation, I want you to know something, that the pain that you've experienced here recently is only but a setup and a preparation for the blessing that God has had in store for you real soon. Your blessing is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your overcoming is on the way. And just like Coach Dawn Staley, I want you all to be able to testify. She was overcome with just such gratitude, not only for what her players had done, but watch this, she's giving God glory. She said, I serve an amazing God who gives me un uh, uh, unusual favor. And I just want you to know, Pastor Hill, and to others who may be struggling right now, that there is unusual favor that follows each and every one of us. The Word of God lets us know that surely goodness and mercy, oh my goodness, I wish someone would come with me. That Doc Manage, you better tell them to mute me because surely goodness and mercy are going to follow you all the days of your life. Girl, I want you to know that regardless of what you have experienced right now and what you're going through, if you look over your left shoulder, there is goodness. If you look over your right shoulder, there's mercy. Goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your life. And no matter how difficult those days may presently seem, you still have those two bloodhounds of heaven, goodness and mercy that God has assigned to each and every one of us to follow us all the days of our lives. You may be experiencing tragedy and disappointment right now, trouble and trial right now, but please hold on because I want you to know that that goodness and mercy are following you and your blessing is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way. Your victory, I wish I had a witness in the virtual house with me that could testify that your victory is on the way. And I'm sure, Pastor Hill, Dr. Manders, if we were able to allow folk to unmute themselves, there would be more than a few people that could testify and say, Pastor D, I'm with you right now. I know exactly what you're talking about because I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood and your testimony is that you still were able to come out on the other side a-okay. And it may seem like right now that Pharaoh's army is in front of you and the Red Sea is behind you, but don't you know that we serve a God who is a way maker and he has a way of making the highway of heaven part the Red Seas of your life so that you can move forward on the very same ground that once was no longer for you, there for you. I need you to know that God has a way of doing these things. And so y'all, I'm excited because here on Super Tuesday, 
Wednesday. This is an opportunity for us to be encouraged, for us to be, to us to be inspired, and for us to share the good news that Jesus is the one who will make ways for us in the wilderness and be a river for us in the desert. Go on and testify if you believe that that's the kind of God that we serve. Pastor Hill, go on ahead. I'm going to pass you back the mic so that you can continue to do what you're doing. But I'm excited that you're here with us tonight. I'm excited for the Super Tuesday family, and I'm excited for the word that will be heard a little bit later on. Well, well Pastor Hill, before you say a word, let's let Pastor D calm down a little bit. We'll play some special music and he can keep on preaching. We can tell Dr. Bushner if he can come back next week. That's all I was going to say, uh, Dr. Man. That's, that's my he comment. Just keep we, on going. So we, we're we ready. We're ready to hear that word in a few minutes. Just take your time, Pastor D. That mic is hot in your hand and we want to just let it go. All right. <laughs> He's having a blast. He's having a ball in this place. <laughs> well, we praise the Lord and we magnify God in the midst of our trial. We're not waiting for the for the for the trial to be over. Even in the midst, we're going to praise Him and pray to Him in a moment. But by way of announcement, we need to let you know of the great things that are taking place and things that will take place. And first of all, you should know by now that the Adventist Community Services of the Bermuda Conference will be celebrating. Watch this. 50 years, y'all, uh, their 50-year anniversary beginning on tomorrow night at the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church. And um, Thursday, they'll be in workshops. They've brought in speakers and presenters. And then Friday night, they've even brought in the likes of, I believe it's Pastor Oric Hetzberger of the Minton Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church. He'll be the speaker for the Friday night right there at Hamilton Church. And then... Um, from the North American Division, Kelvin Watkins, Pastor Kelvin Watkins, Vice President for the North American Division, who serves with our own president, Dr. G. Alex Bryant, will be the preacher and speaker there at the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church at 11 o'clock on Sabbath morning. And so we want to give God thanks, Pastor Hill, that the Adventist Community Services can mark the beginning of their journey in this mission and conference, and they track 50 years of service to this community. I think you ought to praise God and put your hands together for the leadership that has been giving good service to to this country for those who stand in need. You know, the Bible does say, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty. You gave me drink. I was in prison and you visited me. I was naked and you clothed me. And these are some of the ministries that we find right here in the Bermuda Conference. Our present leader is none other than Sister Dora Baker of the St. David's Seventh Day Adventist Church. You ought to show her some love. She is really dedicated to serving humanity. And Dora Baker, if you're online tonight, if you if you uh, are present in the house, we want to give God thanks for you. In fact, we should get you online, um, and so that you can even give a word to us. She's probably entertaining her guests for the weekend, and so we want to thank God for Dora Baker and every community. Community Services Director of our churches and those who are teaming with them. We want to say thank you for all the ministry that you do across the island from week to week, um, helping the, those in need, ministering to the broken, helping the hurting, and relieving those things that burden people. So again, we want to welcome you. That's tomorrow night at the Hamilton Church at 6.30 in the evening. The award will go forward. We will be celebrating 50 years of the community services right here in the Bermuda Conference under the leadership of Dora Baker. So we want to thank God for that. And so this weekend, we'll taper off Wednesday night all the way to Sabbath morning. So keep that in mind, and you're welcome to come Friday night and Wednesday night. And of course, you'll be in your churches on Sabbath, but they will culminate right there at the Hamilton Church um, where worship is a joy, and they tell me that the love is real, Pastor past the heel. And so, and so right there, we want to thank God for, for that, for that announcement. We also should know by now as a Bermuda Conference family that we have invited um, Pastor Hernandez, Roger Hernandez, um, who is a, a, an evangelist there in the Southern Union of Seventh-day Adventists. He has um, consented to be our speaker in the month of October, the 11th, running straight through to the 19th. And he has a process by which he would like for us as members to follow. You should have known by now, your pastors and directors um, should have shared by, by now, 
that as of the 8th of April, running straight through to May 18, we find ourselves in a season of service. We want to be very intentional with this, and it may be that you have chosen as a member or as a church a daily activity of reaching out to somebody. There are devotions that are available. See your, your local pastor. He will share with you. She will share with you those devotions that you can have for this 40 days from April the 8th to May the 18th. And we want to engage our community in some way of serving them. You know, the Bible lets us know, in fact, that Jesus was one who met men where they were in the community. In fact, we are told through the pen of inspiration that he mingled among men, he met their needs, he won their confidence, and then he bid them follow him. And so we're asking that the church of God, we as members, we as people of the book, would not just be prophetic people and preaching the end time truths, but that we will go out there where the hurt is, find out what the need is, and minister to those needs, become friends of people, and lead them to your friend, Jesus Christ. And so we're, we're trusting that during this time, we will be able to invite others um, at some point in time to a celebration where we culminate a season of service. That's right. So all during this season, we are out there on the battlefield, making known to men and women, boys and girls, the love of God in some way, shape or form. Pastors, I know that you could say much about what your church is going to be doing, what you're doing as an individual. I hope and pray that we are encouraging our members to be involved as this is the first part of the series that will culminate in the month of October. He's entitled the series, We All Have Problems, but then he slashed out the word problems and put hope. We all have hope, regardless of what your problems are. I'm thankful that Roger Hernandez has a wonderful healing message of hope for those of us who are broken and hurting. You don't want to miss this series, but leading up to the series, we're trying to invite as many friends of ours into the place so that we can have a powerful experience of healing by the grace of God. And so please keep this in mind during, the, during this whole season of service from April the 8th to May the 18th, wonderful things will take place at your local church, going out into the community, making friends for Jesus and helping somebody along the way. Well, that's what we have for you by way of announcements, Pastor D. I wanna thank God that we have the privilege of being abroad and um, uh, going over there into the Huntsville area. And we're back, all of us are back right now. Good to see Pastor Hill and Pastor D in the virtual space. And I'm so glad that we can fellowship tonight one with the other. I so look forward to Super Tuesday because not only do we pray together and hear good preaching, but we get to fellowship one with the other as a Super Tuesday family. And I see Alicia Brangman there. She's got to be um, one of the... Got one that's got the A's in the class. She's never missed a beat, even when she's been in hospital. Put your hands together for Sister Brangman, who never misses uh, uh, us on this platform. And I do see a, a, a Bermuda flag on my screen in the person of Pastor Mike Faisal. And Pastor Mike, good to see you there. I, I want to thank you for your support, your love for Bermuda and ministry, and for the way in which you have blessed us time and time and time again through your pastoral ministry, through your teaching ministry, and just by you being Mike. And we thank God for that and for your children's ministry. You've been often instrumental in helping our boys and girls during camp meetings and other, other seasons. You and your lovely wife have been a great addition to the Bermuda Conference family. And we so thank God for your presence here on Super Tuesday. Well, I wanna get out of your way. There are needs that we have tonight for prayer. Um, we do mourn tonight, Pastor D, the loss of life in Bermuda Conference. And as we slow down and think about the fact that in the midst of our joy comes pain, right? We are all shell-shocked at when we got the news of the passing of Michelle Wolf. I, I just was in unbelief. And I had to call a few people and say, am I hearing correctly? Even as I was walking to the hospital, I was telling myself, this is not true. This is not true. This cannot be true. But Michelle Wolf has passed. And we are indeed 
uh, mourning her, her loss. We know that there is heart and pain in the, in the wolf family and we, our prayers and condolences go out because when one person rejoices, we all rejoice, but when one person hurts, we all hurt together. And so we are in a season, saints, of not just service, but a season of sorrow a season of brokenness, a time when we have lost loved ones. I have lost another cousin in the person of Raymond de Rosa. We are much a part of the de Rosa family. My mother was a de Rosa, and he was a member of the Southampton Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he now has laid down his sword and shield and studies war no more. He now rests in Christ. He, he will be funeralized on Sunday at two o'clock at the Southampton Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we pray right now for the DeRosa family that they too will, will sense the comfort of God, the love of God, the presence of God, and that they too will hold on to the hope of God. Because I tell you, we have this hope. Pastors, I started thinking today that one of the things that takes the sting out of death for me is the fact that we know that our loved ones are resting. The Bible talks about the fact that they are sleeping, okay, resting in peace, right? Death for us is a sleep. And of course, you and I, you know, every day we wake up, we go about our lives, our busy lives. And then we come to the end of the day, we prepare to lay down and rest a while. And prayerfully, we get five hours past us of sleep, six hours, seven hours of sleep. And then what happens? The Lord, in his mercy, he wakes us up every day. And so every day we go through this experience, right? We live and move and have our being. We get tired and then we rest. And I want to thank God that the same is true with us physically and spiritually, that right now we go through our lives. Some reach 40, 50, 60, 70. If by measure you go beyond 80 and 90, that's the goodness of God. And then you rest, right? But guess what? Just as you woke up this morning, there is coming a brighter and better day when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ, those who are resting in Christ, will wake up again. And this time, mortal will put on immortality. That's the hope we have. And so I trust and pray that it still hurts, it still stings, but know this, our loved ones are resting. And I pray that God will help us with these understandings because we are not exempt from sickness, suffering, or sorrow. I would ask that you please pray for my son, Stephen Manders, even now that we would pray tonight for him and his health because he's not in the best of health. You may see him on the stage. And I observed him um, at the 35th reunion of Dynamic Praise. I knew he was not himself. And when that was all over, I knew he didn't want to miss it. But when it was all over, he headed to the hospital. Still there. And so I would beseech you as pastors to please pray for him and his mother, Claudette Diane Williams Manders, that you would please pray for her as well as because you know mothers, how they feel about their sons, right? And these are not the only persons. I'm going to lift up um, tonight Morris Francis. He's a stalwart amongst us. He's been a mentor to many of us. He's a Christian if ever there was one, and we are lifting him up in prayer. There are perhaps other names that I could call people like Sister Waldron, Geraldine Waldron of the Somerset Seven Day Adventist Church. If we all brought our names and put them in the chat tonight, there would be many, many people that we would be praying for and we should pray for tonight. I know our time is getting away from us, so pastors, I'm gonna stop and allow God to use you to lift these individuals up in prayer because we need to talk to God tonight and ask the Lord to move in a special way in our hearts that we will sense his peace and presence on our bodies that he will heal them and then soothe our troubled minds as we have lost loved ones during this season. Pastors. I would invite Pastor Dean to take us to the throne of grace in prayer. Absolutely. Let's bow our heads. And before I pray, I just want to ask that we would take a moment just to still our hearts, still our thoughts as we seek the Lord in prayer.
So Father God, tonight, we thank you for the sweet hour of prayer. We thank you for this time that calls us from a world of care. We thank you that we in this moment can come to you in seasons of distress and in seasons of grief and that our soul will find relief. And God is even in our grief and our sorrow, we still give you thanks because you have afforded us access to you when we go through times like this. When we go through seasons like this, we can still call on you. And Lord, I don't know about anybody else, but I I don't have the premier's number on speed dial. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't have access to the president of the United States. I, I don't have access to heads of countries across the world, but I do have access to the creator of the universe. And I'm thankful today that I can pray not only for myself, but I can pray for others. I'm thankful today, Father, that you've given us that room to come to you whether we're up or we're down or we're somewhere in the in between, Father, we can come to you and call on you in these times. And Lord, you are such a good and gracious God in that your desire is that you would hold withhold no good thing from us. Your desire is that you is that we would cast all our cares upon you, because according to your word, you care for each and every one of us. Thank you, Father, for your care that has been extended to us. Thank you, Father, for your love that has been manifested to us and towards us that while we were yet still your enemies, your son died for us. God, you have shown yourself and your intent toward us over and over and time and time and time and time again. So many doors you've opened for us, God. So many ways you've made. All we can say, Father, tonight is that you have been better than good to each and every one of us. And God, because you've been better than good to each and every one of us, it's the reason why we can cast all of our cares on you. It's the reason why we can lay all of our burdens down at the feet of the cross. It's the reason why we can come boldly before your throne of grace and mercy. Thanking you, God that you hear us, and not only myself, but even myself as I pray, there are others even now that are praying as well on the other side of their screens. God, you hear each and every one of us. That's the beauty of serving an omniscient, all-powerful, ever-present God. God, tonight there is hurt in the land. There are families that are mourning the loss of loved ones, lives that have been taken from us, uh, people who have been taken from us, God. Relationships that will no longer be explored, Father, as folks have been laid to rest. And God, there are some things that we just don't have answers for. There are some, some questions that we truly will only understand better by and by. But Lord, in the midst of us waiting for an explanation, you sent us your Holy Spirit to extend to us comfort. And so, Lord, I pray that you'll comfort the afflicted, comfort the hurting, comfort the grieving, comfort the brokenhearted, comfort those who have lost loved ones. Think about Brother Bob Wolf and Jaden Coleman, Lord, comfort them. I think about others who have uh, lost loved ones who are going through this season of grief, comfort them. I think about those who are grieving, not just the loss of someone physically, but there are those who are grieving the loss of relationships. There are those who are grieving the loss of finances. There are those who are grieving the loss of health, God. There are those who are grieving the loss of all kinds of things in their lives. Lord, I pray that you'll comfort them. Lord, I pray that you'll go in the chat right now and I ask you to see beyond just what's been typed and the various requests that have been typed in that chat, Lord. People just right, just typing down, please pray for me. People even being willing to share just a little bit of what they're going through in the chat right now. I pray, God, that you will move mightily on their behalf. 
And God, not just for those who are brave enough and even bold enough and audacious enough to share their burdens, share their prayer requests, but I also pray for those who, who quietly and silently suffer on their own. Those who may not have anybody here on this earthly plane to lean on. Those who may not have anyone here on this earthly plane to share and help carry the burdens of life with God. May they know that there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother and who never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, I pray that your spirit will draw close to us in this season that we're in. I think about... Uh, Uncle Morris, and Father, I pray that you'll be with him. I think about Sister Manager's father, the first lady of our conference, a woman who has been so gracious and so kind and so loving. I pray, Father, that you will heal her to full and give her and restore her to full strength. I think about Stephen Manders, God, Dr. Manders' son. He's been such a gift to us, to the body of Christ. Lord, I pray even now that you'll go by his bedside and you'll touch him and that you'll raise him up. And God, whatever you are birthing inside of him, I look forward to I look forward to what you are going to give him as a result of him going through this experience. God, also, I pray that you'll be with and our community service as they celebrate 50 years. God, I thank you for the various leaderships, those who have led that ministry, who, who have done so much for this island of Bermuda. And even now, I think about our very own Sister Dora Baker. I pray that you'll continue to bless her Continue to open doors for her. Continue to let her make an impact in Bermuda. And God, speaking of impact, I think about the series that's coming up here in, in October. Be with evangelist Pastor Roger Hernandez. Be with his lovely wife as they partner and team together during this ministry, Father. I thank you that we, he has consented to come to us. Now, I pray that we'll each and every one of us do our part. God, we're on the battlefield for you. We're on the battlefield for you. And Lord, we make this promise that we will keep on working, keep on believing, keep on striving. And now, Lord, as we conclude this prayer, I do so asking you that you will take a coal from the altar and touch your manservant who you have anointed and appointed for tonight. And Lord, what he says to us not only may be good for us, but may we share it with other people. God, we love you. We thank you for this platform. And we look forward to, Lord, how you are going to transform us even tonight. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor D, for that consecrated prayer, lifting our offering up to the Lord tonight and believing and trusting ourselves to God. Well, tonight we have a preacher in the house. We are so glad to welcome back to this platform one who is in the top 10 of our introduction of Super Tuesday. He is none other than Dr. Rupert Bush, all the way from Ak Akron, yeah, uh, Ohio. Uh, we love this brother and preacher. He is well-educated, having matriculated through the Oakwood University, Andrews University, got his doctorate at the United Theological Seminary there in Dayton, Ohio. Um, but more than having his doctorate, he began his ministry with Allegheny West, and during that time, he served as the youth director, the family life director. God extended a call for him to go to the Southeastern Conference, where he passed it there and then served as a chaplain at Oakwood University. He went back to Allegheny West, served there as a church growth conference evangelist. He is, has distinguished himself as a pastor and then went to South Central in men's ministries. I mean, the Lord has blessed him and now he's back in Southeastern. He's preached around the world and he's been a marvelous pastor. He presently serves at the Mars Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Message of Hope Church right outside of Orlando, Florida. Of course, he met his bride of 40 years right there at Oakwood. The Lord has blessed them with five adult children. And watch this. They are the proud grandparents of nine grandchildren, one deceased, but nine grandchildren. Come on and talk to me. He's been fruitful. His family have been fruitful and they have multiplied. But my friend talks about and preaches about his best friend, Jesus, who is the Christ. He loves young people, and his motto 
is what you are is God's gift to you and what you become is your gift to God. I trust and pray that after special music, you will hear God's voice speaking through our friend, none other than Dr. Rupert Bushner, no stranger to Super Tuesday. We welcome him back. May the Lord bless us richly tonight through his word and men serve it. Fleeting 
till I reach the promised land. Till I reach the promised land. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Renee, for that awesome, incredible song. Until I reach the promised land, I must admit and must confess, I am so excited to be here on Super Tuesday. You have an awesome, awesome community of believers who come together on Tuesday. And I praise God for the Super Tuesday family. And I just thank God once again to my friend, Dr. Manders. Thank you for the invitation to be here with you all tonight. And then to my friend, Pastor D, Pastor Hill, God bless you. I, like I said, again, I started to close up my Bible. I said, it's done. Said it's been addiction. Pastor D, you lit us up with that word. And I thank God for your ministry, Pastor Hill. May God continue to bless you both. And yes, we're praying for our family there in Bermuda. We love you all. I love each one of you. And I praise God for the blessing tonight. Well, I, I've got to be short tonight. I'm not going to be long. I'm going to hit it and quit it. But I want you to know that I praise God for, again, the privilege to share with those of you who are here tonight. And again, I, I just get excited because I know God has been good to us. He's been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And for that, I am thankful. I'm thankful for, again, your pastors, how they come together. Super Tuesday, that's wonderful. The fellowship is incredible when men and women of God can come together as leaders and lead their people to green pasture. And so I'm excited tonight. Then also I want the pastor Manders to know I'm praying for him and his family. Didn't know that Steve was in the hospital, but we're going to remember him in prayer and your wife. Remember your family along with everybody else that God will continue to bless and keep each one of you. Well, tonight I want to go ahead and get right into the word of God tonight. I got a few moments, a few minutes here, and I want you to know that just recently you all are familiar with what happened here in the United States. They had what is called the eclipse, the total eclipse and it was awesome. It was amazing. It wasn't in my path, but um, they called it totality, total eclipse. And so I'm going to move right through this tonight. I've got two Bible verses, and then I'm going to try to make it relevant, raw, rousing, and real so that the word can make sense. When I talk about the, um, the eclipse, everyone here was so excited about it. They were blown away about the grandeur. You know, it's amazing how when it comes to Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Christ. When it comes to Easter, we celebrate the resurrection. And then when something happens in nature, we begin to talk about how awesome someone or somebody is out there that made all of this. Well, the good news is this. We know who it is, and that's God. That's the creator God of the universe. And so I got about 15 minutes that I've got to share with you what's on my heart, and I'm going to try to condense it. But man, I was blown away as I was watching the eclipse, as I was hearing people talk about it. All I can say is we serve an amazing, awesome, incredible God. And I want to tell you tonight, you're on the right side. Don't change sides tonight. You don't have to doubt or wonder who's going to win. We know God is. So you're on the right side tonight. Please believe me. Well, the Bible text says this. This is what Paul says in Romans chapter one in the word of God. So if I forgot to mention anybody or anything, please forgive me, but I got 15 minutes to try to give you this nugget, this thought that the Lord put on my heart just on yesterday. I was wondering ever since I was asked, Lord, what I'm going to preach about and I'm praying about it. And all of a sudden yesterday, the eclipse, many people were preparing for it, but then the Lord, again, he shows up and he shows out. And one thing I know of this, I'm going to read it tonight. Listen to what the Bible says, Romans chapter one, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and for also the Greek. For in the righteousness, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The righteousness of God is revealed. Man, I want to unpack this. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. They suppress the truth. In other words, they try to hold it down. They don't want people to know about it. But I'm telling you, it's going to get out. 
This gospel should be preached into all the world for a witness. Then shall the end come. He that shall come will come and he will not tarry. You can't hold it down. And this is how I know you can't hold it down. Because, this is what the text says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it to them. God has shown it. God has shared it. He has revealed it. He has given us a disclosure and a revelation that is without doubt, with clarity and precision. I like that. Watch this. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. His invisible attributes. Man, I wish I had time. My time moved fast. For since the creation of the world, his invisible, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood, being understood by the things that are made. So the things that God has made, he has given us a revelation of his invisible attributes, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Wow, wow, wow. And then and let me read this verse here. Let me read this verse here. And then let me expound. The Bible says this in Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let there be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, <laughs> the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Wow, that's what God did. This awesome, incredible God we're talking about made all of this. Now I want to go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, speak to us in these few moments we have together. We'll give you the honor and the glory because you are worthy of our praise. You're incredible. You're awesome. Father, just bless us now. So that the word will be so clear that if we are lost, God forbid, it will be decision and not deception. Make it so clear tonight that a child cannot err. In the precious, marvelous, wonderful name of Jesus, we pray this prayer. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, tonight I must admit I am a little excited because when I thought about the eclipse on yesterday, and how the world, and yet, in fact, North America and many others were excited about this eclipse because they don't happen often. They come about so many years because in order for an eclipse to happen, a total eclipse, there has to be precision of alignment where the moon comes between the sun and the earth, which is a solar eclipse. But when the earth comes between the sun and the moon, it's a lunar eclipse. I learned a lot. And so... When I was looking at this and I was praying about it, thinking about it, I asked a question and I thought about tonight. Just want to speak on the subject when the sun gets blocked, you know, and you can put the S-U-N and the S-O-N. But something happens when the sun, the S-U-N gets blocked. Something happens. In fact, according to the research that I did, just a little perusal, there are actually four types of solar eclipse. There's what is called the total total solar eclipse. There is the annular, annular solar eclipse. There's a partial solar eclipse. And then there's a hybrid solar eclipse. Now I'm not going to, I don't have time like I wanted to, to get into each one of them. But what happened on yesterday, what was called a total solar eclipse, where the sun and the moon line up to the point where there's precision. Because sometimes when you see the moon at night and you can see it, it's not really lined up in front of the sun, but it's in the sky. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Well, according to the research, I found out that the earth actually takes about 365 days to go around the sun. That, that's how long it takes. Now, I was blown away when they were talking about it, when they said it actually takes about 4,333 days for, in fact, Jupiter to go around the sun, which is about 12 years. Can you imagine that? If you lived on Jupiter, every time you went around the sun, you would be 12 years old. Then you'd be 24. And then, in other words, it takes 12 years for Jupiter to go around the sun. Believe it or not, it would take 29 years for Saturn to go around uh, the, the, around the sun. Wow. Uranus, now it's 84 years 
Can you imagine living on Uranus? It would take 84 years for you to go around the sun. You'd be 84 years to make one revolution around the sun. 165 years to go around Neptune. Now, this is not a science class, but this is to help us understand how big our God is. And this is just a small fraction of what's in the universe. God made planets and galaxies all over the place. In fact, they say he stood out on nothing and put the other foot on nowhere and spoke to nothing and nothing started becoming something. That's the power of God. And don't you worry about it tonight. If he can speak to nothing and nothing can become something, I believe like E.E. E. Cleveland said, I've seen God do so much for so many for so long that he could do something with nothing, meaning you and me tonight. So I believe if he can speak to nothing, he can speak to you and me tonight. And I believe there's power in the word of God. It takes that much time for these planets to go around the sun. And just imagine when you talk about this solar eclipse, you talk about the power of God. I've got to go back to this text where it says in Romans, since the creation of the world, the invisible attributes are clearly seen. They had commentary. There were statements made even on Facebook and Instagram about doubting the power of God. They say, why are you making so much about this? Why are you talking about the earth is flat? And why are we talking about this? Allah did this, but I beg to differ that my God, the creator of the universe, spoke this world into existence. They spoke it in six days. And you know the story. He rested on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. He blessed that day and he set that day aside. And notice if I would just park right here for a moment when he says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That means in order to keep the Sabbath holy, it has to already be made holy sometime before I tell you to keep it holy. Now, I have this little apple thing here, and it's white. I hope you can see it. It's white. And if I gave this to you and told you to keep this white, it has to be white before I gave it to you or before I give it to you. Therefore, if I say keep this white, it has to be white before I put it in your hand. I'm so glad the creator God left a mark for us to remember who he is. That's why he says in Revelation chapter 14, fear God and worship him that made heaven and earth, made the God that made the universe, made the God. We ought to worship him because he's worthy of our praise. And if we worship this true God, you're going to worship the God that made heaven and earth in six days. It didn't evolve over several millions of years. We did not come from a bang theory. It just didn't happen out of gases. You were not some monkey that sprouted limbs, came out of a lake like an amoeba, a one cell organism and grew and, and became. No, no, the monkey is not our cousin. We are made in the image of God, created by a loving creator and a compassionate God. In fact, you see, what I want to talk about tonight is this thing called the sun and the moon. I just got a few moments. In fact, if the moon could testify, what could we learn from the moon? That, that's my question tonight. What could we learn from the moon based on the word of God? Now, first of all, it says God is going to make sure he's no, he known, he's made known. You don't have to doubt it, wonder. You don't have to live in the dark or any anonymity. God is going to make it so that this gospel shall be preached to all the world for a witness and then shall the end come. So at the end, when it's all said and done, when he that shall come will come and will not tarry, when Christ comes back as king of kings and Lord of lords and the clouds roll back like a scroll and they tell me the dead in Christ going to come up out of the grave like pop corn on a hot griddle and we're going to meet him in the air when he comes back before that happens i believe in all my heart that men and women boys and girls are going to get a chance to hear this everlasting gospel but they must make a choice for themselves they got to decide whether or not they want to serve the lord the master of the universe but i'm so glad he gives us the benefit of doubt i'm so glad tonight that he's not going to leave anybody in the dark whatever question Questions you have, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God 
He shall direct your path if you don't know and can't figure it out. Let me tell you, the Bible says to those who believe, that's John chapter 8, where Jesus was speaking and the Bible says he paused for a minute and said to those disciples who believe. You see, when you're preaching the word of God, you might be speaking to a crowd, but the word is only effectual to those who believe. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that come to God must believe. And so in John chapter 8, verse 30, 31 and 32, he was speaking, Jesus was preaching, but then he paused and said to those who believe, to those who believe. Now watch this. If you are a believing person, you are a disciple. And then he says this, if you continue, he says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciple. That's verse 31. But verse 32 is where we shout. But verse 31 is where we get the context. In other words, 32 can only be a shout if you understand 31. 31 is telling us, because you are my disciple, if you continue in my word, there's some fringe benefits that you get. <laughs> in other words, the path of the just shines more and more and more and more. If you are a new believer tonight, if you've been in the faith for all your life or you've been walking in the light for a long time, it doesn't matter. The Bible says, the Bible says the path of the just shines more and more. God don't give you what you need tonight. I believe that tonight. I believe we serve a God who what is called marvelous adaptation. Everything in nature, according to Psalms, the 115th division, it looks to him. The word it says it like this. The Bible says, the eyes of all look to thee, and thou giveth them their meat in due season. He satisfied the needs of every living creature. Now, woo, I got a lot in me, so I'm trying to sell, I'm trying to calm down, which simply means this. Before you have a need, God going to meet it. And so when we look at the text in Genesis chapter 1, understanding that God will give full disclosure. In fact, Peter of Inspiration says that in the judgment, we will see a full panoramic view of how and when we walk with the Lord from the time we were born to the time we die, which means all the opportunities, whether saved or lost, everybody will one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, which means we're going to be able to say true and just are your ways because God did everything he could to reveal himself to us. And that's why the text says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. It's so one of the things I learned is that the closer the planets are to the sun, the faster they rotate around the sun. The other planets further away, they go around the sun a little slower. Don't you know God in his grace, God in his mercy took these things to show us his Godhead. It says here, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made the things that he made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, on yesterday, you know what God did? Once again, he gave the world, he gave the you, he gave this planet a stamp on who he is. How, how can you say that? He, in other words, this total eclipse had the attention of millions, thousands, who stood in the path going over about 15, 15 states, whereas that shadow moved across the planet across our earth, across the United States, it moved at 15,000 to 3,000 miles an hour. And it only lasted in about for four minutes in certain areas. But when they got the eclipse, the eclipse let them see something that testify. And that is the moon. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me read it one more time. The Bible says, then God made two lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also. So you know what that is. God made the sun, he made the moon, he made the stars and other luminaries and the firmaments also. Oh, I got about five minutes. Okay, wow, this time is whoo. And, and so when God did that, God said, I made the greater light to rule the day. I made the lesser light to rule the night. Now, if the moon could testify, the moon would tell you, number one, this is what the moon would tell you. This is what the moon would tell you. <laughs> The moon will tell you, during an eclipse, depending where I am, will determine my perceived size. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Because, see, when you understand the different eclipse, a total eclipse, annual eclipse, 
a hybrid eclipse, and then you have what is called the partial eclipse, are all different eclipses, and they're different because it determines and depends where the moon is. You see, the question was asked, well, if the moon is so much smaller than the sun, which it is, how can the moon block the sun? That was the question asked, because they want to doubt God's power. They say, well, if, if that's true, if the moon is so, in fact, the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon. The sun is. The sun is 400 times bigger. It would take 64 million moons to put in the sun. 64 million moons to put it in the sun. 64 million. So they're asking the question, if that's the case, why is it that the moon can block the sun? Well, depending on where the moon is can determine the size that is perceived. Okay, let me say it this way. So when the moon is very close to the sun, now watch this, watch this. The closer you get to the sun, the smaller the moon will appear. The closer the moon gets to the sun, <laughs> the smaller it appears. Oh, let me stop right there. In other words, you know, when you and I get close to the S-O-N, when you get close to the sun of the living God, the smaller you will recognize yourself to be. You'll be humble. You'll be loving. You'll be kind. You'll be merciful. You'll be grateful. In other words, those Christians who are close to the sun understand their perceived size. They recognize that I'm nobody and I'm nothing without Jesus. That's the S-O-N. In other words, during a total eclipse, what we had yesterday is because the sun is actually, the moon is actually closer and, and, and therefore we can see it, but what happens is it covers the moon because it's a total eclipse. Now, the moon would tell you the reason why I'm so small is because I got close to the sun. <laughs> and when you and I, as sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, when we get close to the sun, we won't look down our noses at everybody else. We won't look at the drunkard or the prostitute. We won't look at the homosexual or the lesbian indifferent. When we get close to the sun, we'll be like Jesus. I must work the works of him while I have today. In other words, the day will come when we can't share the good news. If I'm close to the sun, I recognize how small I am. But see, during an annular solar eclipse, it, that that's when you don't you don't cover all the sun, and, and that's when the further I get from the sun, the bigger I appear. So when the moon gets closer to the earth, further from the sun, the moon appears bigger, and therefore, when you get further away from the sun, it's all about you. Nobody can tell you anything. You can't see yourself. You can't see your problems. You can't see your issues. Nobody can talk to you. In other words, when you get further away from the sun, now you think it's about, you know, what you eat and what you wear. Now, those things are important, but they become a priority opposed to the soul that Christ died for. Oh, my time. I can't even spend much time. In other words, the moon would tell you, depending on how close I am or how far I am from the sun, will determine what kind of eclipse you're going to get. Well, the second thing the moon would tell you, it would testify and tell you that when I come between the sun and the earth, I will always cast shadows. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? In other words, when something or somebody comes between you and Jesus, darkness appears. Oh, that's why that shadow came across the United States is because the moon got in the way of the sun. Let me ask the question. What are you letting get in the way of you and the sun? The S-O-N. What is getting in the way of you and Jesus? What's blocking your life from Jesus that's causing darkness to show up in your soul? And check this out. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, this is the reason why I know that when you don't have the sun, you don't have light. For instance, there can only be a shadow if there's light. Jesus says he is the light of the world. In John chapter one, verse four, he says, in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That's why when you get to Psalm 23, verse four, yea, though I walk through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death. Now, remember, it didn't say it was death. It's a shadow. 
It's a shadow. Why is it a shadow? Because Jesus, the son of righteousness, is shining, but something got in the way between you and him. And sometimes death interrupts it and it comes in unannounced and uninvited. Death's death steps his ugly head in and causes a shadow. <laughs> but you know what? He says this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. So when the darkness comes and even though a shadow covers my life, I realize that it's only a moment if weeping endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. If I can just hold on long enough, he that shall come, will come. Y'all, y'all, excuse me. That's the second thing. So, so when the sun and, and, and when this moon comes between the sun and the earth, you're only going to have darkness. You're going to have shadows. You're going to have problems. Don't ever let something eclipse you. Don't let a hypocrite. Don't let you know, it's amazing how we come to church and we let things and people and events and circumstances eclipse the sun of righteousness shining on us. Don't let anything. Don't let anything block you. That's why I said tonight when the sun gets blocked, what happens? And, and, and lastly, I got to hurry up. Notice what the text says. In fact, listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. In other words, the moon says I can't give light when the sun is darkened. If the sun is nowhere around, I have no way to shine. <laughs> so you're not shining because of your vegetarian diet. You're not shining because you read your Bible. You're not shining because you go to church. You're not shining just because you do good. In other words, doing good doesn't save you. In other words, right doing doesn't make you righteous. It's the son of the living God that makes us righteous. <laughs> Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. How did he get right with God? He believed God. The just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that come to God must believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I love the Bible. Notice what the word of God says. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. When the sun is nowhere, nowhere around, you're in trouble. I, I mean, really, you, the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Unless Jesus is in your life and unless Jesus is shining on you, you have no way of making it. In fact, let me say this. I'm about to close. I'm about to close. Revelation 22, verse 5 says, and there shall be no night there. Why? And there's no need of candle, neither light of the sun. The sun won't be there for the Lord giveth them light. Woo! Even the sun, 93 million miles away, 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, even with the sun, they said when we had the total eclipse because the sun was, was, was totally moved out the way, we couldn't see the sun, but because you could see the corona around the sun, you were able to study it. That's why they said during this eclipse, you were able to learn more about the sun because you couldn't see into it. See, when the sun slows down, you can learn more about the sun. That's why <laughs> if you got a three blade fan, OK, if you got a three blade flan, when you turn it on, it's moving so fast, it only looks like one. OK, <laughs> but you can only study the Father, Son and Holy Ghost because he turned himself down. He turned himself off. He humbled himself and became obedient. Even in other words, if God didn't slow down, we would know there's a Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And so God himself slows down. And that's why the Bible should be studied. That's why the word of God needs to be lifted. And I'm closing. Oh, let me say my last thing, y'all. I'm not finished, but I got to stop. I don't have end of sermon. I just got to quit. The last thing the moon would tell you, I can only reflect the light. <laughs> okay. In other words, the moon would tell you, I don't have any propensities in me to be able to illuminate, but I only can reflect the light. So when I come between the earth and the sun, I block and I cause darkness. But ever when moonlit nights, when you see me, when I'm lit up at night, remember, he said he made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. That's why on a full moon night, the moon is not between the earth and the sun. It is at an angle. And so when the sun gets the light from the moon, because the moon says I don't have illuminary propensities on my own. So what I do, watch this. I'm almost finished. What I do, the moon would tell you, this moon testifies, the moon would tell you what I do. I watch to see where the sun is, and then I line myself up with him. And because I'm lined up with him, I'm able to reflect his light. That's why John the Baptist said, I know I look like the light, but let me tell you, I'm not the light. I might preach, I might teach, 
I might do any of these things I do, but let me tell you, I am not the light. I'm not worthy to even untie his shoes. He's the light of the world. And I'm just reflecting the light. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, all we are are reflectors. We reflect the light. And what you need to do, the moon tells you, this is how I do it. I stop complaining. I stop worrying about my trouble. All I do is get up early in the morning. I get on my knees and begin to pray to God, help me have alignment with you so that I can reflect the light. And when the light is reflected, guess what happened? He made two great lights. I'm about to quit. I promise. He made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. In other words, the moon says, when I'm lined up with the sun and the sun gives me the light, I'm able to rule at night. Oh, you missed it. That was a good place to shout. No worries. Okay. The moon says, ah, I line up with the sun. I stop worrying about other people. I stop dwelling on problems and situations. I just get lined up with the sun. I'm so lit now that at night I'm able to rule my darkness. Oh, let me ask a question. Are you ruling your darkness tonight? Well, maybe you need an adjustment. Maybe you need to line up with the sun. Maybe you might be a member, but you're not a disciple. Maybe you have a Bible, but the Bible ain't in you. Maybe, maybe, oh, I'm just saying, okay, I'm going to stop. In other words, line up with the moon. The moon, line up with the sun. My brothers and sisters tonight, it's been sweet. It's been nice. But we can learn something from what we just had yesterday. That's why he says, the invisible things are seen by what I display. You know, God has constantly given us displays of his awesome grandeur. In closing, the Bible says it this way. I'm closing, I promise. This is the condemnation. Light came into the world, but men chose darkness rather than light. Nobody's going to be lost because they were born a sinner. Nobody's going to be lost because they had issues and problems. Even the thief on the cross got his reservations in before he breathed his last breath. It's not too late. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. This is the condemnation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed in him should not perish. In other words, you can be saved tonight. God wants to save you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this way. I know the plans I think towards you, plans of peace to give you a future. I'm praying for you tonight. Don't reject the light. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Father God, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for nature. The invisible things are preaching to us about the goodness of God. Father, thank you again for how you're speaking to the lost and the saved. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. You've been good to us, and I just thank you, God. Be with my brothers and sisters there on the wonderful, beautiful island of Bermuda. I love them, and I pray that they all, God, will just walk in the light. I pray for Dr. Manders. I pray for Pastor Hendrickson. I pray for Pastor Hill and all the pastors. I pray for all the upcoming events, evangelism. God, may your spirit rest upon them. May you anoint them, I ask, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, coming King. Amen and amen. God bless you all. God bless you amen. all. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Doc. You always come through for us. I well, thank God that you are part of the Super Tuesday family. Put your hands together for our friend, Dr. Rupert Bushton, giving us a timely word tonight, uh, making the, 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 the signs that we see and the things that we've been witnessing in the sky relevant uh, in our own spiritual life. Thank you so much, Doc. We know that you have to run, but as you run, we'll be praying for you and give you regards to your lovely wife and thanks again for your ministry. If you were blessed tonight, may we continue um, to look to the Lord from whence comes our help. Our help, pastors, comes from the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. We're going to leave with a word of prayer. Pastors, prayers out tonight. Sure, let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, God, we're so grateful for the word that we've heard. And may nothing, God, um, eclipse the word that we've heard. May it take its root and be inculcated in our minds and our spirit that it would bring forth fruit in due season. And God, I pray for the preacher tonight that you would continue to use him, that you would bless him a hundredfold uh, for what he has poured out. And Father, we thank you for his willingness, um, for his availability, not just to us, but to you. And so I pray for coverage. I pray for protection. And I pray, Father, ultimately, God, that he would continue to be used um, as an instrument in your hand. And so we thank you tonight for another Super Tuesday. Lead us, God, into the rest of the week. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hill. Good night, everyone. God bless you is our prayer. Take care.
miracle signs and wonders. 